silently beside a lectern. Listening as their professor presented their work to a conference. Usually. The students would want the glory. And they had, just a couple of days previously. But their families talked them out of it. A few weeks earlier. The Stanford researchers had received an unsettling letter from a shadow United States government agency. If they publicly discussed their findings, the letter said. It would be deemed legally equivalent to exporting nuclear arms to a hostile foreign power. Stanford's lawyer said he thought they could defend any case by citing the First Amendments. Protection of free speech. But the university could cover legal costs only for professors. So the students were persuaded to keep shtum. What was this information that United States spooks considered so dangerous? Were the students proposing to read out the genetic code of smallpox or lift the lid on some shocking presidential conspiracy? No. They were planning to give the International Symposium on Information Theory an update on their work on public key cryptography. Fifty things that made the modern economy highlights the inventions, ideas and innovations which have helped create the economic world we live in. It is broadcast on the BBC World Service. You can find more information about the program's sources and listen online or subscribe to the program podcast. The year was 1977. If the government agency had managed to silence academic cryptographers, they might have prevented the Internet as we know it. To be fair, that wasn't their plan. The World Wide Web was years away. And the agency's head, Adam Bobby Ray Inman, was genuinely puzzled about the academic's motives. He felt cryptography the study of sending secret messages was of practical use only to spies and criminals. Three decades earlier. Other brilliant academics had helped win the war by breaking the Enigma Code. Enabling the Allies to read secret Nazi communications. Complicated maths now Stanford researchers were freely disseminating information that might help adversaries in future wars to encode their messages in ways the United States couldn't crack. His concern was reasonable. Throughout history. The development of cryptography has been driven by conflict. Two thousand years ago, Julius Caesar sent encrypted messages to far-flung outposts of the Roman Empire he had arranged. In advance that recipients would simply shift the alphabet by some predetermined number. For example, Joab asks Job Joe if you substitute each letter with the preceding one reads invade Britain. <laughs> 